Welcome to Prophet Central. We are still going strong with the year of Isaiah and the word of the Lord given to the ancient prophet Isaiah. And this week, we will continue onward into chapter 45 as we continue on the similar topics from before of the idolatry of God's people and the need to remember the true God and put off iniquity and repent of everything that is ungodly. So thanks for sticking with me. We're going to finish out this year strong. Let's do the word summary. In chapter 45, we get 774 words. 0% are neutral, 19% are negative, and 81% are positive. So we're continuing on this positive streak. I know the previous chapter was majorly neutral. And before that, we've had five or six chapters or so that are either neutral or positive, leaning towards the positive side. So we'll continue the trend, going on to chapter 45, verses 1 through 4. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two-leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. We get an interesting start here to this chapter, and we get a type of a servant of God, or essentially Jesus Christ, right? Cyrus is presented here, who is the king of Persia. Now, I'm not saying he's Christ-like, but he is a type of what the Messiah, the Savior, the Deliverer, the servant of God will do, okay? And the Lord here is said to send a servant who is mighty and strong, like King Cyrus, but in greater ways. This is just one aspect. But this servant will aid the people of God in being gathered together and returning to build the city, the holy city, which is the city of God. Even though the church members haven't truly known God, it's said here, they are pursued by God and they are given a promise of salvation to be loosed from their sins, to be freed from that captivity and that spiritual prison. And they are given the sustain they need to truly know of the power of God and have it manifest in their life. Now verses five through eight. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Now, the message here is that there is no other God beside or other than the Lord God of Israel, who is the source of truth, all truth, all things good, all things period that have been created in our realm of existence. And it is said again that in large part, the members of the church, the people of God do not know him. God identifies himself as the creator of heavens and earth and all things, both good and evil. It's interesting that he takes ownership of everything. I'll also say here that the earth has been corrupted and fallen, but God will pour out his spirit and his blessings from the heavens. He will open up the heavens and rain down to the earth in order to save all of the inhabitants. Now liken this to Matthew 3, 16, when Christ himself is baptized and the windows of heaven open up and the blessing is poured out upon that servant the Son of God. Let's go on to verses 9 through 13. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What makest thou or thy work? 
he hath no hands? Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou, or to the woman? What hast thou brought forth? Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. I have made the earth, and have created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives. Not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. So here's more messaging of us believers, members, Christians, uh, contending with God and rebelling against him. Although it is oftentimes in ignorance, we are presented here with this idea of our maker being a father and mother. And these are heavenly parents that created us, that are our maker. And we are commanded to inquire of God concerning us being their children. We need to rely upon God's goodness to be blessed with righteous living, being led by God in his spirit to be gathered together. And this is in the service of God in building his holy city and also freeing the others from evil, from captivity. We'll keep things short and sweet, continuing on into verses 14 through 19. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee, in chains they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them, they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth, and said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain? I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Now this is an important segment of this chapter because what's presented here is that God's enemies who fill their lives with religious idolatry and with the wealth of the world will be moved to humility. They'll be humbled to repent and to join with the chosen people of God whose God is the only God able to save and to give life. And because of such power, this God is recognized as being hidden and unknown to many who thought God was manifested, perhaps in their outward ordinances, in their religion, and in their church organization. But they will be ashamed of their religion, and they will ultimately recognize the deception of their idolatry, and they will desire the salvation of God's elect servants. What's also mentioned here is that God never did work in hiding, never worked in darkness and in secret, but has always sent servants to speak truth and to speak righteousness and to make things plain, to make things known. And we just need to open our ears and open our eyes and see that God is there and that he is speaking. He has foretold of all of these things. And we need to hearken. The last group of verses here, 20 through 25, assemble yourselves and come, draw near together ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together who hath declared this from ancient time, who hath told it from that time, have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. 
that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. So the end of this chapter tells us that those who escape the vicious and carnal cycle of religious idolatry are commanded to gather together with God and with his people. As I said before, God has always been speaking truth since the beginning of time. He has given his message through his servants, and he is the only God and Savior of mankind. None of God's words will pass away, and they will not be retracted. They will not be taken back, but they will all be fulfilled, and they will play out as God has planned from the beginning, just as foretold. A beautiful thing is that all will eventually come to recognize the majesty of God and recognize that he is our maker and the creator of heavens and earth. Yet, we still see that some will resist the undeniable truth. They may bow and they may confess, but they will be incensed, they will be angered, and they will be ashamed. Only God's elect people will be justified and will worship in truth. Even though everyone knows the same truth, the same knowledge, they all confess, some people do it in truth, other people do it with a grudge. So we have the choice ourselves to make now. Are we going to change our hearts? Are we going to change our minds? Are we going to repent and turn to God, get out of the motion of just doing things by the flesh, but start doing things by the spirit and by simply love for God, letting him dictate, letting him guide us and taking his spirit as our guide continually. I pray that we all can allow God to transform us and to make us anew, to change us into his children. May God bless you all. I look forward to next week. We're going to combine chapters 46 and 47. I hope to see you there.